Motivation. <laughs> I'm motivated. But what do you do when motivation is not enough? You rely on your work ethic. You rely on your discipline. That's my talent. Now let's get it. The stage, please welcome Julian Peters. What's going on, everybody? This is Julian with my Mentality Podcast. For those listening, welcome back to my voice. For those watching, say hello to my beautiful face. Hope y'all are doing good today. I have a special guest with me today. She is my teammate. She is one of my team's coaches. She is uh, uh, a mini goat in the making, Miss Charmaine Cloud. How are What's you doing up? today? <laughs> good, good, good. Happy to be here. That's dope. Yo, so, you know, it's funny. I was wondering what your last name was. And so it's <laughs> very simple. But I actually play, like, video games, and I created a team, and they're, they're the clowns. How crazy uh -huh. is that? Hell so, yeah. <laughs> this is this is fate that this is supposed to happen, right? right? So where are you located? I'm in Texas. I'm, um, I'm closer to Dallas. I'm about an hour and a half to two hours east of Dallas. Okay. So I, my um, dad and his side of family are from Houston. Okay. So my That's little... the majority of my followers are all in the Houston area. Really? I, yeah, I do a good bit of traveling down to Houston, going down to Alpha Lee. Um, mm -hmm. I got a couple of friends down there. So that's where the majority of my following is. That's dope. Yeah. So I lived in Arlington for like a year. Okay. Also, I got family in Oak Cliff that tells you okay. anything. And then okay. my little brother plays football at UTSA. So. Okay. Dang. Why didn't you come to Texas? I hate it. What? Yeah. I'm originally from Oklahoma. No. I'm originally from, from Oklahoma. Where? Oklahoma. Oh, okay, okay. So Houston is like the second home because that's where like my dad and his side of people are from. But it was just yeah. too busy. Like I, I like low key areas. And every place I've been to in Texas has been busy. Okay, I get it. So, so and I, Texas can, out though. <laughs> I can hear a little Texas draw in this voice as well, which is kind of funny. Um, who me? Yeah, you. <laughs> hey, me. <laughs> There's a little bit of action there. Sometimes. <laughs> All right. So um, background-wise, let's talk about, like, you grew up in Texas. Is that where you always been from? No, I grew up uh, Army kid. So we moved every roughly three years, two, three years. I was born in Germany. My mom's from Greece. So her whole side of the family is over in Europe. And, um, yeah, we, we were in Europe just until I was six years old. And then we came. But we stayed mainly in the South whenever we did do our moving, um, once we got to the U.S. So farthest north I've ever lived was Washington State, but that was only for two years. So that was about it. But ended up down in Texas. That's where everybody's at, my family. So really? they love it here. <laughs> no, that's dope. And so you really are like Greece. Like you're Greek for real. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. I remember asking you that. Do you say it? But you know, most people yeah. say that and like, they yeah, when you asked a... about the food, I'm telling you, we got it. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's dope. So what's some of your, let's get off, what's some of your favorite, like, Greek food? Uh, well, my mom, she actually cooked, um, she cooked it last night, bifteki. It's like, um, it's beef, but it's got feta, it's filled with feta cheese in the middle. It's super good. So bifteki, um, any, honestly, I love the ouzo. The liquor that mm -hmm. tastes like black licorice, ouzo, um, anything really my grandma makes. Whenever I went to, uh, when was it? Right before COVID hit, I went to Europe and I went and visited my grandparents. And it was like this huge feast. The whole kitchen was full of anything that you could think of. Different sausages, different little types of pita breads, uh, all kinds of stuff. So... There's lots of different kinds of foods that I like. So that's one of my like dream destinations. That's actually okay. like, yeah, that's actually like top three. So okay. I want to go to Greece just because I've, I watch a lot of like food traveling. And so I've seen like a lot and it's just yes. beautiful over there. It's super um, fresh food. Yeah. And so yeah. I want that. I want to go to England just to go to a soccer game, like a football game. 
yeah feel that experience and then I want to go to Korea so like those are my top Korea. three yeah that's awesome yeah Greece if you end up going you have to tell me and you're gonna have to meet my family and that's you a, yeah will. I was getting ready to go there next I'm like so yeah gotta, I'm gonna have to zoom the Link up somehow, so, yeah. <laughs> so yeah that's yeah that's, for real they'll treat you well for sure, for sure. So uh, you moved to down south in Texas. You just going to school up until then? Or like, what were you doing? Actually, so I had, I just graduated from uh, beauty school back in August. Mm -hmm. So with the uh, bodybuilding thing, I really wanted to dive into the behind the scenes glam with what goes on. So I wanted to do the makeup, the hair. So I went and got that um, taken care of, went to school. It was only um, six or seven months long. So it wasn't too bad. I just finished up with that. And then now um, I got hooked on with Team Legacy for coaching and hitting that pretty hard. Did a couple of um, shows for makeup. So we're rolling now. That's what's up. So... Yeah. Is that something you're pursuing? You're doing coaching and the hair? Like you're doing both? Yep. Yeah. Okay, very cool, very cool. And then competing-wise, I know you've done some competitions. So how did that go? What's the plan there? Like, are we uh, coming to the stage soon? Yes. Yeah, so I competed my first show this past summer. I did the Europa in Dallas as my first show, which was really, really intimidating. That's a huge show, but I had a lot of fun. I met a lot of people, learned a lot for sure about how things go, things to avoid next time and things to still keep doing for the next show. So we, we geared up again, um, four weeks after Europa and we hit the, um, Louisiana state championship in Lafayette and did even better in that show, um, came in with a better package now that we we're a little bit more familiar with how my body responds to things. And that show felt like a breeze for me compared to Europa. Europa was so intimidating with it being so many people. Yeah. But whenever we got to um, the second show, I, I felt like, okay, it can't be any scarier than that. So. <laughs> yeah, I we'll remember just... my first show. Um going on stage i tell people this all the time i was in between like doing the stanky leg and elvis mm -hmm. dance because i was so nervous <laughs> i could not get my leg to like not stop shaking <laughs> to where i had to like close my eyes like look at the <laughs> ground and be like stop stop <laughs> and then i looked up and i was good but i was nervous so I, and that wasn't a big yeah. show so I, I feel you on that so. Yeah, I remember when I first walked onto the stage at Europa, I looked I looked over at the crowd and I was like, okay. <laughs> and I kind of remember my first routine, like being up there and I kind of don't because I blacked out a little bit, but I was super shaky too. And whenever I got off stage, I said, okay, I need to just breathe. It's over with. Now I have a couple more chances on stage. So if I mess up one time, like I got other chances, I'll be good. <laughs> right, for sure. So yeah. we, we go into that because we kind of, I feel like me and you have a little bit of similarities in the sense of, so a lot of people knew me for going through like a really big transformation as well. Like if you knew me in my sports background, I was like the kid who drank sodas all the time, ate pizza, chubby. Mm -hmm. I used to tell people all the time, like, I can't have that. It's not in my genetics. Like, and I believe that. <laughs> For the longest. Yeah. And so seeing like your transformation and everything for me was just, it's really insane to see. But let's talk about that a little bit. Like, how do you, how do you look back now at the person that that was? How do you feel before we really get into it? Oh, gosh. When I look back at those photos, I remember, so the photos that you've seen on my um, Instagram and TikTok I remember taking those and crying after I took those and feeling so, so bad about myself and not feeling, not in the best mental um, space and definitely not healthy. So when I look back, I feel, I remember that and I feel bad for her, but I also get really excited thinking about it because I know what, when I look back, I'm like, okay, well, you know, I, I've grown so much from that. So I had to go through the struggle in order to become the person I am today. Right. So, That's I'm awesome. Yeah. One of the quotes that I love is the only way to get to is to go through. Exactly. I think sometimes people forget that. Like sometimes we got to go uh, through these things to get there. But exactly. while we're on the subject, ta-da, look what we have here. Uh -huh. Sharing my screen. 
Charmaine the Great on Instagram. So this is <laughs> this is the transformation we're talking about, y'all. As y'all can see, this is completely insane. Like it's two different people. Thanks. But you can also tell though, like the foundation was there. I think that's the weirdest part about situations like that is I could I didn't know I could build muscle very fast mm -hmm. until I started. And then it's like all of the body fat and everything was like, okay, we're gonna go in the right places. And yeah, it worked right? out. It just took Uncovered. some discipline to get there. So no, this yeah. is crazy though. Yeah. Thank so you. let's talk about it. Let's get into it. So what got you wanting to even start losing weight? Well, so kind of a long story. Um we got plenty of time. In, awesome. So back in high school, all through or growing up, I was pretty athletic. Um, I played softball, I did cheer, I did dance. So I, I had an athletic background, but I mean, I, I ate whatever I wanted. I, I wasn't really keen on dieting or even knew where to start. Didn't have some personal trainer, nothing. Just went about being a kid. And I kind of started to get a little bit more into the gym. With my dad being military, he's always been super active and wanting us to um, also be active and not, not be lazy, blah, blah. So I started to get a little bit into the gym at the end of high school. I would go along with my dad. But then I, I got into college and <laughs> everything changed from there. I did the partying. I, the freshman 15 was definitely more than 15. <laughs> and <laughs> so I gained a little bit from college, but um, not too much. But I, I got into a relationship and it actually ended up being a very, very toxic and abusive relationship for me. And that's where things really, really hit hard for me. Um, I, I got very depressed. I took, uh, I started binge eating. Uh, the drinking kicked up a lot more. And that's where my weight really set in. Within a year, I had gained like um, about 50, 55 pounds within wow. a year. And so that with that happening so fast, I got hit with a lot of health problems. So... I started going to the doctor, I started having some issues, and then we, we did some blood work and doc came in and said, hey, if we aren't, we, we don't start making some changes here, then you're going to be diabetic. You're already starting to have issues. You're running into pre-diabetic here. And I was 21 at the time. And being told that at 21, when, you know, your whole life, you've been the athletic kid, you've always been, you know, pretty active, relatively healthy for the most part. That scared me. And the thought of having to be, my, my grandmother's diabetic and with seeing how she's had to live and the adjustments that she's had to make, that's all I thought about. And I remember thinking, I don't, I don't want to live my days like that or have my kids worry about, or when I have kids in the future, have them worry about me and my health and if I'm going to be okay and it carrying on to them with them genetically. And so I knew that I needed to take that step. And that same weekend <laughs> that I found out the, that news, uh, my mom, she competes. I went to um, my first bodybuilding show with her to support one of her friends that was competing that day. I went to the Texas Cup. And there I met um, Angelica Teixeira. Uh, and she is an absolute doll. And I had no idea who she was at the time. And she talked to me and she gave me some really kind words and encouragement. And of course, looking at her, I was like, gosh, she looks amazing. Mm -hmm. So um, I was gawking at that and really taking in everything that she said to me. And she was very inspiring and pushed me to, she said, I want to see you compete one day. And I'm like, okay, well, I got to do it. If you, if you of all people are telling me to. Right. So I, I sat down and I watched the show and I really, really just was completely overtaken by the whole atmosphere. It felt like a really big, um, genuine community and seeing everyone come up on stage and seeing not just like how amazing they looked, but how empowered they were. And you could tell they had been working so hard for that one moment. And I wanted to experience that too. And for selfish reasons, and also just to, to be healthier and um, work for something that I have never achieved before. So from then on, I I set out to do it. I said, okay, well, I'm going to prove to myself that I, I can lose this weight before I put any money into competing because competing is, is expensive. So yeah. I, <laughs> I, um, I told myself, okay, well, we're going to, 
we're going to learn how, how to lose weight. And at the time I had no money for, um, any kind of personal trainer or to do anything like that. So I had to learn from myself, from the internet and every once in a while, there was a, a girl that I followed on Instagram that, um, she put out like a, Oh, uh, we'll do one-on-one online training for like 30 bucks. So okay, I'll, I'll try that and see how that was. I didn't really find it very, um, good for me. So I had to also learn that, um, what worked better for me and my body. So just diving into that and really listening to myself. Um, my first month I lost 30 pounds and, uh, I lost the, I got down to 109 pounds <laughs> within two and a half months. And so it was pretty crazy. Uh, but I got, I got very invested, fell in love with it. It was my runaway from uh, my at home life, not being so great. So, um, but that also got me the courage to, um, leave that relationship whenever I started to realize that not only physically could I be strong, but also mentally, um, I could be strong enough to leave and live the life that, um, how I'm supposed to for me. So, yeah. And then, um, I finally hired my first coach and I had very little muscle from there, from the very fast weight loss. Um, so we started building, I started learning what it was like to eat, to uh, gain muscle, how to, how to lift accordingly for bodybuilding. And um, I learned a lot there. And then I uh, eventually moved to team legacy and, and during my prep and I had an amazing time um, with Chris coaching me. It was really great. I learned a lot there too, seeing how different coaches do different things. He saw my passion within it. Um, we hit the shows did really good. And then after the show reversing, he asked me about coming on to team legacy and as a coach. And I was, I was like, really, <laughs> are you sure? So <laughs> I, I was really excited just to be able to um, look back on what I've experienced and be able and what I needed from a coach and be able to be that person for mm -hmm. someone else. Right. One of the things I really liked that you said was, um, it wasn't just physically, you were stronger mentally to be able to leave that situation. Because I think a lot of people miss out on that in bodybuilding. And yes. they think because our outsides are so big and muscular that like everything's okay. And I'm like, there's a lot of insecure, heartbroken people that just start picking up weights and still have yet to address what's really going on in here. Why did I get to that point to even make me start lifting? So- exactly. I really like that you said that and, and props to you for being able to do that. That's dope. Thank you. <laughs> so, okay. And now I'm going back and I'm, I'm going through our, everything you talked about. I know it's a lot. <laughs> oh, your mom competes. Yes. So we does. have a mother and daughter show coming at some point. Yes. It's only that right. I mean, we've come talked on. about it. I know we've got to, um, we've talked about having that moment um, quite a few times. So, to be announced, stay okay. tuned. <laughs> that's awesome. Hopefully next year, that'd be really awesome. Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome for yeah. sure. So when you when you when you're going through the weight loss process and then you get out of it and you're you know better, do you ever find yourself being drawn back to those thoughts of when you were binge eating when you were going through that? Oh yeah, oh yeah, especially coming out of um, like my last show, reversing. No one told me how difficult. <laughs> reversing can be um after a show but also how important reversing out of the show is so i knew what to i knew that okay well we're we've got to slowly add some food in let's reverse out but i didn't realize how lost i would feel after the show um that first week after the show was finished i i honestly i got pretty sad i felt i felt like i had lost um purpose in a way I'd worked so hard to get to this one goal, but I just had to take a step back and realize that, okay, just because we hit this goal doesn't mean that there's no other goals. We just need to create a new one. So, um, but during that time, I, with me being so emotional, I had to fight back those urges for, um, for binge eating. Cause at the time or back in my past, I would get very emotional and I would turn to food as an outlet. So I even can say, because I recently just got out of a divorce situation, 
Mm. Um, and I did not understand. I understood the power of food, but I even started understanding it more with the fact that like, I wouldn't get hungry and crave till about 930 or 10 at night every night. And oh yeah, I, that's when that was all for me too. Yeah. So what I figured out was the reason that was is because I was home alone. Those are normally the times where it's me and wife, we're mm-hmm. chilling, the dog's there. Like I don't have a need to go get food because I've already eaten. We're just hanging out. Now that that's gone, I had nothing. So I'm the first thing I would do, I'm like, I'm gonna go get food. Like I'm gonna go eat. I'm gonna go grab mm-hmm. this. And I just it's started a comfort thing. Yeah. Comfort. And I just started ridiculously eating. And we went from at one point I had gotten to about 225. Everything was starting to look good. Like once I hit my 220s, you'll start seeing like chest starvation and stuff like it's getting popping. I think I gained 30 pounds in a month. Wow. Yeah. yeah. I was 250 something within a month of just, I'm still working out. Like I'm still doing those things. But even then mm-hmm. going to the gym wasn't the same because I'm yep. processing. And then I'm just literally, I would eat, feel terrible about it. Wake up the next day. I'm going to start my day fresh and be back on diet. Da, 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 and then again. Yep. 9 30 or 10 i'm gonna go grab something it'll be all right i'm not doing a show oh just one more day yeah 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 oh i i I got time yeah Yeah. and it just it killed me so i understand that so what about as far as confidence goes how did did you you know was there a struggle being confident after the weight loss after the weight loss i would say my um like reversing out of the show no, just in general, just from like your oh, transformation, okay. because like you um, said, you, you were dealing with that. You're getting out of a relationship. You're mm-hmm. getting better mentally. But like, I know some people struggle with being confident and not seeing that same person. So was that any of that going on or? No, honestly, my, um, my ex really hated my, uh, my love for the gym. When I would go to the gym, it would always be an argument or it would be, um, it would just turn into, because it was something that I had that was, on, that was mine and no one could take from me. Right. And with him taking so much from the other parts of my life, he, he saw me have that moment and he didn't want that for me. A terrible relationship. But so with me growing and getting, getting more stronger and starting to feel more confident because I, I'm, I'm losing this weight, I feel good. I'm starting to see some, you know, definition, feeling great, wearing the clothes I never thought I'd ever wear. Um, it, I started to grow. And then um, as far as the relationship, it just started channeling down. But the good thing with me doing going up and the relationship going down as I felt more strong, okay, I'm going to leave this relationship because if he's not going to support me doing well and growing, then that's not someone that I'm going to spend the rest of my life with. So my confidence grew. Um, and whenever me and him did separate, I, I took a, I honestly, it was hard. It was hard, even though it was a bad relationship, it was sad. So, um, to eventually have to separate from someone. So I did take a little bit of, I had a little bit of a hard time with confidence afterwards, not knowing if, um, you know, I would be in a relationship again if I would ever find love. So <laughs> that, yeah. So getting into that, it did affect my gym life. Um, I, I would, I think I took about two weeks off from the gym, which I hadn't had a day off, or I had a little bit, a day, couple of days off, rest days, but I didn't take any time like that away from the gym. So it was a bit emotional for me, and then I realized that how much the gym did mean to me. And that it was just, it was more than just building a physique. So um, I got back in and started to build back up my mentality again. Like, okay, all right, this is, I found, this is where I really need to be. Now let's work on Charmaine. And so continuing growing that confidence and find with, within myself and finding myself and what I really wanted to do. Cause I felt so lost mm-hmm. again, after losing someone and not, not having that person to come home to or and, and you know how I feel about that so yeah. yeah in in a way I I grew confidently in many different ways I would say more so I grew more confidence within who I am as a person rather than how I appear right I like that 
And I tell people this too, because a lot of people are like, how are you still going? Like, what are you doing? And I'm like, honestly, I'm too hard headed. Like, I look at it like this. I look at it at a point of, they're like, well, you, you know, do you still believe in marriage? I'm like, yes. You still believe in love? Yes. And they're like, how? I'm like, because I let her win if I turn bitter and decide that marriage isn't for me. I don't, all girls are terrible. Love is horrible. And I'm just too hard headed to allow you to have that over me. And that exactly. really powered me to be able to get to a point where I could just breathe again and smile. Cause exactly. it's just like, I can't let you have that over me. And that sounds weird, but it's the truth. And I think a no, lot of people- I understand that. Yeah, right? I totally get that. And whenever, um, whenever we did separate and I went through that little phase of not wanting to do anything, not going to the gym, I had that moment where I'm like, I'm not going to, I'm never going to let him take that away from me. Right. And that's, that's been what's been mine. And I started lifting and started this journey because I wanted to find something that no one could take from me. And that was that. So I had totally- understand where you're coming from yeah. being stubborn yep and that's kind of it's interesting the timeline I started this podcast probably three or four months before all of it went down on my mm -hmm. end but it's the same situation like this was mine mm -hmm. like, I started this it wasn't a, 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 a husband wife thing or it was mine and yeah. it helped me because I had something when I looked around like I'm like nothing in this house is really mine except for what's behind me but nothing in this house is really yeah. mine besides clothes and shoes like the bed the couch like that was shared or she brought or but yeah. this like this is me and mm -hmm. I took that with me and it was a good place to keep going so I feel you on that and yeah. I applaud you for getting through it and now impacting people the way you are I think that shows a lot you. about you. you keep doing your thing Charmaine the Great Hey, so. honestly it's so weird when I hear people my Instagram name was an accident Really? Yeah, it was an accident. Um, we were, I was out with some friends. We were at dinner, and I wanted my Instagram name used to be Charlizzle Gets Fit. Yeah, that's and terrible. I, I, yeah, it was so bad. <laughs> but I wanted to change it, and um, I I didn't know what. And my friend Jose, he he grabbed my phone and he put Charmaine the Great, and I was like, No, that's too cocky. No, no, no. And he, I didn't know that he had save until the next day. And I'm like, you know what? I think it's dope. Why not? Hey, I mean, <laughs> we're all great. We're all goats. Yeah. You just got to talk it, manifest it, and make it happen. <laughs> I'll tell everybody till the day I die, I'm one of the greatest people ever to touch America, Earth, whatever. <laughs> Prove me wrong. You can't. So we're good. So <laughs> Julian the Great. <laughs> Julian the Great. Juju the Great. We'll go to Juju, Juju the Great. Juju so, the Great. Okay. Now, before we get into the next part, um, I asked you a question. You asked you put up on Instagram a list of questions and I asked one and I didn't like your answer. So I was going <laughs> to wait here to address it because okay. people who would kick Charizard's ass on any no. given day. And we no, know no. that. We know no. that. Why do you think that? Because he's like the star character. He does everything. But he's not as strong as Charizard. Very true. I'll mm -hmm. give you that. But he's the star. So it doesn't but, matter. Okay. Pikachu is overrated. <laughs> totally overrated. Just because... No, 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 no. You, you can't... Just because he's cool and he's the most famous one doesn't mean that he's the best one. I will give you that because right. there's some crazy dudes out there, but Charizard was not one of my favorites. That was like one of the dudes that you get at the beginning and you level up with and everybody had. Like a Charizard, Bulbasaur. Yeah, I know. You know what I'm talking about? Like you had... If you didn't have that, you was kind of whack back then. You yeah. Know what I mean? so, no, That's I feel you. Today, I was going through, um, I was going through some of my old stuff, and I found my old deck box of Pokemon cards. Are they still in there? Yes. You know how much. And money there's Yu-Gi-Oh cards worth? too. You know how much uh, money that could be worth. That's what I was thinking. I was like, mm, I need to keep these. <laughs> yeah, keep that and like look it up, dude. Like those things are starting to like pop again. Yeah. Well, I've always. Since I've been a nerd since day one. So in fifth grade, I was super, super into Pokemon. And I I had a little wallet. And since fifth grade, I have carried a Charmander Pokemon card in my wallet. And it's just transferred into- It's still there? Yes. That's dope. Not That's dope. 
And if you, I mean, you see me on Instagram, you know how goofy I am. So yeah, I'm proud of that. You should know. Yeah. That right oh, I'm when, proud of that. So I got the goal to be um, a pro one day. Yeah. Okay. So when we get there, you know, you stand on stage, you got the cool IFBB pro card. Yeah. Well, I want, I want to have that card, but I also want to have a giant like poster size Pokemon card. And Charmander, IFBB Pro, and my face on it. <laughs> Do it. I yeah. told Ryan, so you know, like Ryan does the IFBB Pro jackets. Yeah. I'm like, yo, that's cool. I'm getting a custom pair of shoes when I turn pro. So that's so you. That's me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm yeah. definitely getting a custom pair of shoes. But when I say like nerd status, so I got those made. Those are so cool. Yeah. I got a rocket power pair too. Rocket power too. Yeah, so I'm I'm like I said I'm a big I'm a That's big kid, so, yeah. Yeah, I love it. I would love to get. I love shoes. So every time you post something about shoes, I love it. But I'm like, how do you even find these shoes? I don't even know how to go about that. So next time you're looking, hit me because I I search everywhere. Number one, I it's bought the real plug goat ebay i've done it all my homeboy does customs but he's kind of stopping so that's where i've got all my custom shoes from but yeah mm -hmm. i just do a lot i and i'm not afraid to buy used mm -hmm. some people are i don't care like if it looks yeah. in good shape i'll buy it and to me i wear most of my stuff too so like yeah use is a thing like guys i don't buy shoes yeah. to hang them up here and be like hey look like i actually wear my stuff yeah. so yeah let me know and i can find whatever but all right, don't get me started on that because we will be talking for like well, six I mean, hours. We'll talk forever. <laughs> don't do that, yeah, at all. So, um, you talked you talked a little bit about coaching and what got you into it. Mm -hmm. How do you like it? What are some things that you see as strengths? What are some things that you want to improve on? And what is your overall goal with coaching? Are we looking at like the next Ryan Hinton in the making, <laughs> or like what's going on? Uh, minus I the, minus the transgressions. <laughs> Minus the transgression. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you're going to love that. <laughs> so, <laughs> well, coaching, I kind of, we bringing me on, we were talking about me doing more lifestyle clients. And I have been doing training on the side for quite some time, but I hadn't ever offered it to the public because. I, I knew that I was getting ready to prep for a show and it was going to be my first show. I didn't know what to expect, if I could even handle having a workload, if I did have quite a few clients. So um, I did some with some friends that um, I, were very close to me or some people just around town here and there. But um, I knew I eventually wanted to hit coaching on another level, but I just didn't know when. And I got through the prep, I realized, okay, I really, really love this. I really love bodybuilding. I really love coaching. And also um, building a good relationship with my coach, it it meant a lot to me as a competitor just to be close with my coach and felt like I was listening, like I was heard. And just to have that, I call it my prep bomb shelter. I only keep a few people with me. And that one person I feel like should always be your coach. So mm -hmm. when you're in doomsday, you have that person there with you to talk you through it. So that motivated me alone to want to get into being a bodybuilding coach and not doing just lifestyle. So I actually have um, a bikini competitor that I just got not too long ago. Hey. And I'm very excited to finally dive into being a bodybuilding coach too, not just lifestyle. Um, so I'm super excited. Uh, we're going to be competing late summer next year. So I can't wait for the moment to see her on stage and being on the other side of it. I'm also excited about that and just being there for her too. So we're diving into um, having more com competitors come to me. So yeah, and there's that. So I've gone to some more shows with Ryan, seeing how he does things. Uh, seeing the level that he's on and I would absolutely love to be on that level one day and I feel like I would want to do like how he does with having a team because I feel like I couldn't up. yes I feel like I wouldn't not that I couldn't do it on my own maybe but more so I don't want to I would like to have a team and like to have um, 
multiple coaches and create this huge army. <laughs> I, I think that a lot of people grow up with sports background. Like you said, you played sports and everything. Having a team is just important to people. Yeah. I just yeah. think it's, it's a community, a support. Like, I wouldn't know you without Team Legacy or exactly. Micah or or Chris or Kyle, whoever. Yeah. And, like, the minute that I see one of you all on Instagram, I'm going to follow you and I'm going to reach out or I will like yeah. and support because you're a team. Yeah. So, yeah, I agree. I think that is a great way to go is just finding who you trust enough to handle that brand and keep exactly. it Exactly. Exactly. And – when, whenever they asked me to be a coach, I mean, I haven't, Chris and I haven't been working together or I think we started working together back in April or May. Yeah. So I hadn't really been long. So I was shocked and they asked me, I'm like, really? Are you, like, are you sure? <laughs> <laughs> so, but I think I, I was bugging him with questions, coaching questions. Cause I, I wanted, I was building a 12 week program. At, at the time, towards the end of my prep, I started building one and I wanted to put it out and start on my coaching. And he saw that and he saw that my my initiative, I was taking the questions I was asking. And so they were looking for another coach. And that's where the thought of me came up. And we went to um, we went watch the Texas Pro together. And I got to um, see how it is for them as a coach. And we, we all talked and i I felt that not only could I be a part of this team as a competitor, but I felt like I fit in as well as a coach too. Yeah, for sure. For sure. And maybe if I compete again, you can do my makeup for me too. So yeah. <laughs> I can look great now. Just kidding. But no, yeah, I think um, it says a lot when you're on the team in that position. Mm -hmm. It's a prestigious, prestigious thing to be a part of. So I feel you on that. Um, I also did my little post afterwards because I was jealous. I don't know if you remember that. Uh, uh, when I tell you I was in tears, <laughs> I was in tears. Sometimes I got to be like, I hope <laughs> the people understand my sense of humor and like don't get mad because I really was just kidding. Oh, no. Like, no, no, no. Yeah, when I looked at it, I was like, y'all. <laughs> screenshotting and like send out like this is funny as hell no yes. no I have the same sense of humor so good I did deal. not take that any sort of way besides that's funny good deal good deal so yeah. no that yeah I like I like that you're you're a part of the team and you're on like you like you said you're on a you're with people who can not only help you as far as getting the clients but help you if you have any questions yeah um it's I had Chris I in, I interviewed Chris like three or four days ago so oh, like really? yeah, yeah, so like I'm getting all the coaches for the most part, that's just to good. see how they got into it and things like that. Yeah. Um, but that that's awesome, and uh, I think you're on your way. I like your positivity. You're doing your <laughs> thing, you. so keep it that. But uh, to finish this, what are the future goals? We're gonna start with bodybuilding. What is the plan? What is the future goal? So we are building a little bit right now. So we're a little thick, picking up some heavy weight, eating a little bit more. Um, going to enjoy this for a little bit longer when the schedule releases um, early this coming year. We're, uh, we're going to sit down and plan out. We're going to do a couple of shows. I'm going to have a little warm-up show. Looking to go into nationals, seeing how I place there, and create a game plan from there. I'm expecting to compete quite a few times next year. And um, just to create a good package to eventually hope to shoot for that IBB card. <laughs> Feel so, that. And so yeah. let's ask this. After you get the card, what's the goal? Is that it? Oh, no, no, no. We're, we're going to come out swinging, trying to, um, trying to get some dubs at a pro show. Okay. Good. I always ask people that because yeah. I don't know if you've noticed a lot of people on our team, they get the pro card and then they never like compete again. And there's yeah, nothing wrong like, with that, but that's if that's your goal, cool. Like I don't, yeah. but like that's not my goal, like at all. That's like going to the NFL and then not wanting to go to the Super Bowl. Exactly. Right. Exactly. Or not. Not even that. That's like going to the NFL and never playing. Yeah. I'm on the team. Exactly. You know what yeah. I mean? So yeah, yeah. I, I call it joining the league. If I join the league, I'm trying to be a a star player in the league. So yeah, I definitely have I to get off the play. bench. Yeah, for sure. what you got, right? Yeah, for sure for sure. So, and then coaching wise, what is what do you think your future goal is with that? 
coaching, I'm kind of. I know you said the team thing. So let me, like, I'm not yeah. acting like I'm not listening. So I know you said, yeah. you know, you want the team thing, but are you wanting to be like maybe like an Olympia prep coach to where you have athletes like Ryan? Like, what are you thinking? Yeah, that would, honestly, that's a whole dream. Like that seems, I'm taking a day as I, as I go, seeing how I feel about things, but the more that I'm getting invested into this and the more that now that I have some a competitor, the more hungry I'm getting for that and the more interested I am in that. So we'll see how it goes. But I feel like um, I could definitely, once I get my claws in, I feel like I could definitely hit it. Yeah. And go a bit far from it. Okay, for sure, for sure. So we might be, uh, we might be like Ryan. You might get on the Olympia stage as a competitor and then have some competitor at the Olympia that you're coaching. Yeah, that would be so – that would be a dream. I don't even think people realize that at one Olympia, Ryan was competing and Spoon was in it. Mm -hmm. I don't think people, like, get that. Like, he competed and he was coaching yeah. a guy that was in the same show. Yeah, like, Olympia. you go backstage and you have to go look at your competitors. Yeah, you like, that's – You walk backstage and you have to go check on them. That's crazy, bro. Like, the amount of concentration that you would have to do to be able to keep both. And, like yeah. you said – Keep your competitor to where he's confident enough to know that you're doing a good job for him, even yeah. though he knows that you're getting ready to do the Olympia. Like that's yeah, crazy, so. yeah, that is wild. I would the stress. You got to wear several hats, and yep. that's something I thought about. Like, okay, well, do I want to be coaching someone who's in prep when I'm also in prep? Can I handle that? And once I finally went through my first prep and experienced how how I am, I feel like. I could totally handle that. Mm -hmm. Totally. And if anything, it would be a motivating thing. Yeah. I mean, I'm you gotta, you gotta, you work too. <laughs> exactly. You gotta, yeah. you gotta practice what you preach. You can't have a yeah. competitor exactly. and do that. And then they see you. So yeah, I, I feel exactly. that too. So, yeah, but all right. I don't want to hold you too much longer. Uh, this is a great conversation. I really do appreciate you coming and joining. Thanks for having me. Yeah. This was really cool. Thank you for sharing your journey, being a little bit vulnerable with us. Um, Anything else you want to say to close this or? Juju the Great. <laughs> Charmaine the Great. Team Legacy, let's go. <laughs> let's do it. Let's do it. So for those that are listening, thank you for tuning in to our voices. For those that are watching, you got to see two beautiful faces. <laughs> let's go. Hey. Um, just to let y'all know, uh, we will be on. Y'all already listen to this, but just in case, we're on Spotify, now on Apple Podcasts, which is a big deal for me. And we'll be on YouTube if you want to see Miss Charmaine, see how she reacts, actually see the late loss transformation pictures, check that out. Or I will be having her Instagram and information in the description. You guys need a coach, you need inspiration, you need whatever. Click that follow button for her, <laughs> message her, get on the team, and let's get it. So you guys have a great day. Thank you for listening.